Thank you for joining Module 5 of the Bureau of Industry and Security's slide presentation series on Commerce Export License Requirements. In Module 5 of this series, we'll provide an overview of the license application process and support documentation requirements. In previous modules, we discussed how to determine if an export license is required. If you've determined that your transaction does require an export license, you review Part 748 of the EAR. Part 748 contains all of the requirements for submitting an export license application, from registering for the online license application system to obtaining supporting documentation. In this module, we'll explain how to sign up for the online license application system known as SNAP-R. We'll then look at the key information required on an export license application, as well as required support documentation. We'll then provide an overview of the license application review process. SNAP-R enables exporters to submit license applications and commodity classification requests directly to BIS via the Internet in a secure environment. SNAP-R has many features that make it the method of choice for license application submissions. These features include built-in system edits that prevent common errors, the ability to attach support documentation, and the ability for the licensing officer to request additional information through the SNAP-R secure messaging system with an email notification sent to the applicant. License applications submitted using SNAP-R are completed more quickly. In fact, SNAP-R has been so successful that BIS may make online application submissions mandatory. Prior to using SNAP-R for the first time, BIS must assign the user a company ID number and a PIN number. It's easy to request this from BIS. Simply cut and paste the company PIN certification letter into your letterhead, fill out the required information, and fax it to BIS. Here we've provided the website link to the certification letter and the fax numbers to submit your request. In approximately five business days, BIS will call you with your company identification number and personal identification number. With this information, you can then log into the SNAP-R system, set up your account, and submit your license application. When you submit via SNAP-R, BIS receives your license application within just a few hours compared to the two-week period a paper export license application often takes to be received and put into the licensing system. SNAP-R can also be used to submit an official commodity classification request to BIS. Prior to using SNAP-R, it's helpful to review the user's manual, which is available on the BIS website. The user's manual provides a step-by-step -step guide to the online application. It includes screenshots of each page you'll find on SNAP-R and provides answers to those questions frequently asked by first-time users. BIS also has a webinar available for viewing on how to use SNAP-R. The export license application should include all the known facts related to the export transaction. It's important to be as complete as possible so that all aspects of the transaction are clear and apparent to those reviewing the application. By providing a complete and thorough application at the beginning, you'll save time in the review process. When a license application is not complete and leaves unanswered questions, you can expect delays as it will be placed on hold until all relevant information is provided by the applicant. Let's now take a look at the important components to an export license application. It's important on an export license application to correctly identify all parties involved and their role in the transaction. Parties include the applicant, purchaser, and ultimate consignee, and may also include an intermediate consignee and end users. The definitions of each of these parties is available in Section 748.5 of the EAR. There are times when it may not be clear the best way to structure your transaction in terms of the roles and relationships of each party. BIS export counselors are available to provide additional guidance on these more complex transactions. It's important to provide a clear description of the item being exported. The item should be described in commerce control list terms using the characteristics or parameters shown in the ECCN. Be sure to attach technical specifications or brochures that describe the item fully. Providing website links for the product can also be helpful. The end use description is an important part of the license application as it puts into context the parties to the transaction and the items being exported. As such, it's important to be specific regarding the end use of the item. By anticipating questions and concerns and addressing them in your application, you'll better facilitate the review process. For example, is there a balance between capability of the item and stated end use? Would a lesser item satisfy the requirement? Is there excess capability, and if so, why? 
Certain license applications have unique requirements related to their submission. These requirements are found in Supplement Number 2 to Part 748 of the EAR. An example of a unique requirement is that the technology export license applications require a letter of explanation to be submitted with the application. Exporters may be required to obtain documentation from the ultimate consignee which supports the facts stated on the license application. The document required will be either an international import certificate or end user statement or the statement by ultimate consignee and purchaser. These documents are representations from the government of the importing country or from the ultimate consignee and or purchaser regarding the final disposition of the exported items. While most license applications require one of the support documents, there are certain exemptions that apply to all support documentation requirements. This slide provides examples of when a support document may not be required. For details, please review Section 748.9 of the EAR. Note that unless specifically required by the EAR or requested by a licensing officer, the support document is not sent to BIS but kept in the exporter's files. An international import certificate or end user statement may be required if your item is controlled for national security reasons and is being exported to one of the countries that issue such certificates or statements. Some governments issue import certificates while others issue end user statements. In the case of export license applications to the People's Republic of China, a support document is required for any item, not just those controlled for national security reasons. An import or end user statement is issued by the government of the importing country. Exporters must have their customer in the foreign destination apply for the certificate or statement. A list of these government issuing authorities and their addresses is available in Supplement Number 4 to Part 748. In most cases, the certificate or statement is not required if the dollar value of the transaction for the item is $50,000 or less. There is no longer any requirement to submit import certificates and end user statements with a license application, but they must be kept on file. If your export does not meet one of the exemptions for support documentation and does not require an import certificate or end use statement, then the statement by ultimate consignee and purchaser is required unless the application is valued at $5,000 or less. If the ultimate consignee and purchaser are different, two separate statements must be obtained. The statement can either be submitted using form BIS 711, which is available for download on the BIS website, or it may be included as a statement on company letterhead in lieu of form BIS 711, provided that the ultimate consignee and purchaser include all of the required information on the statement. A license application initially undergoes review by a licensing officer or engineer at BIS. Within nine days of receipt, the license is referred out to other reviewing agencies, typically the Departments of State, Defense, and Energy. These agencies are able to offer their unique perspectives to the review of the transaction. A license may be approved in whole or in part or further limited by conditions or other restrictions. Most license applications are approved with conditions. At times, a license application may be returned without action due to insufficient information. Those applications that involve national security or foreign policy concerns that cannot be resolved may be denied. Once a license is issued, it's normally valid for 24 months. The license authorizes only a specific transaction or series of transactions as described on the license. If the facts to the transaction change significantly prior to export, a new license may be required. Certain non-material changes do not require the submission of a new license application. Details are available in Section 750.7 of the EAR. In Module 5, we familiarized you with how to sign up for the SNAPR system. We looked at the important components of an export license application and what type of support documentation is required. We also considered the review process of a license application. In the final module of this series, we'll review export clearance requirements under the EAR, destination control statements, responsibilities of parties, and record-keeping requirements.